grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome to worship this morning. You've joined Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Shoreline, Washington, a congregation of the ELCA where all are welcome and all means all. And North Lake Lutheran Church, Yes, welcome. Uh, we are so thrilled to see everyone today um, on this uh, ashy, hazy day, but it's wonderful to worship together as we follow our call to uh, speak out and follow Christ by standing always with those who have been cast out by others. In our worship service this morning, I just want to remind all of you that you have the opportunity uh, on whatever media you're watching, whether it's Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube, to uh, communicate with us through the chat. And if you would like to communicate some good news or some prayer requests, you can do that at any time and we'll be watching and writing that down for that time in the service. Um, I would ask you to hold off on any comments on the score on the Seahawks game because some people are going to be watching that later and uh, I think better to keep mum about that if you don't mind. I would be very appreciative of that. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to begin this morning with something we have not done in quite a while, which is an order of confession and forgiveness. In the beginning, God said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. But we were disobedient. We did what God commanded us not to do. We saw that which looked good and desiring to be more like God, we did as we pleased. Surely the story of Adam and Eve is our story. We gather together to worship our Lord God, to remember our sin, ask forgiveness, and work toward reconciliation. Our ears are open. Our hearts and minds are ready to receive. Creator God, from the very beginning, we have been rebellious and sinful. We know in our heart we have done that which we know to be wrong, and we have left undone that which we know to be good. Forgive us, we pray. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are forgiven all our sins. Go out in the spirit of repentance and sin no more. Amen. Worship God most high, sound every voice in earth and sky. Alleluia, alleluia. Sing, brother, sun in splendor bright. Sing, sister, moon and stars of night. Alleluia, alleluia. Sing, bro. 
little sister death, waiting to hush our final breath. Alleluia, alleluia. Since Christ our light has pierced your gloom, there is a night that leaves us home. Alleluia, alleluia. Sisters, brother, take your part and worship God with all your heart. Alleluia, alleluia. All creatures bless the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Lord God, grand architect of the universe, your design of creation is unflawed. Yet we continue, continue to litter your creation with defects and imperfections. Show us how not to destroy, but to create, not to demean, but to uplift, not to hate, but to love so that your creation may be made perfect once again. Amen. A reading from Genesis, the second and third chapters. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plants of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was no one to work the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the earth being from the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life and the earth being became a living being. The Lord of God took the earth being and put it in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the earth being, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. God then splits the earth being into two, man and woman. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight to the eyes, that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her man who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his woman hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. I 
about 20 years ago when flying into Los Angeles, um, there was a mother and her young son sitting in the row behind me on the plane. I could hear the boy, little, little kid, boy pointing things out to his mom while he looked out the window. And as we descended into LA, I heard the boy say to his mom, mom, wh what's that really big brown cloud out there? I looked out the window and sure enough, there was this long horizontal brown layer in the sky that hung up above the city. The mom answered her son, well, that's pollution. Silence. And then the mom explained further, pollution is dirty air. When we drive cars or uh, build big things, that, that can make the air dirty um, and it turns it brown. It's bad for us to breathe. There was more silence. And then after a while, I heard the boy ask, mommy, are we going to have to hold our breath the whole time we're down there? I laughed and then looked out at that brown layer. It was pretty formidable looking. Have you looked out your window in the past few days? If you live on the West Coast, everything is hazy, smoky, smells like fire, like ash. I do not think this is what God intended. Today's scripture is about creation. The story begins only with the earth. No plant of the field was yet in the earth, it says. There was no one to work the ground. It's as though the earth was the purpose. Humans were secondary, created so someone could take care of this beautiful world. This understanding is even more evident when we read verse 15. The Lord God took the earth being and put it in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Now I should say something quickly about earth being. For most of you, it's probably the first time you've heard that word used in this text. I prefer using this word in our translation today. It more accurately mirrors the Hebrew. You see, the Hebrew word is Adam, which most Bible versions translate as either Adam or man. But actually, Adam is a shortened form of the word Adama. And Adama is a feminine word that means earth. Adam has no gender. Calling those first human creatures earth beings highlights the instant relationship, dependency even, between Adam and Adama. And this isn't the only relationship God creates in these beginning days of creation. Our scripture today skips when God creates animals so the earth being won't get lonely. And then God takes this earth being and splits it into two. Now we often hear the story as though God just takes a rib, but the original Hebrew salah means side. So God takes one side of the earth being and makes another. God isn't just creating beings. God is creating relationships. And I left out the best one. When God creates humans, God breathes the breath of life into us. 
God's own spirit, creating the most intimate relationship of all. I love this creation story. Beautiful creatures surrounded by a beautiful world. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, we know the story. We know what goes wrong. We eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But why do you think God would not have wanted us to eat from that tree? Wouldn't God want us to have that knowledge, good and evil? Well, let's look at what happens as soon as we eat. First, Adam and Eve notice their nakedness. Now, you wouldn't think that being naked would be a problem. They didn't live in a society that had deemed nakedness as not appropriate. Clearly, it was fine up until now. So why cover yourself? Whatever the reason, this knowledge they've just gained has immediately caused a division. A division between two beings that were created from the same soil, meant to be in relationship with each other. And then when God shows up, they hide. Again, why? Once again, this knowledge they've gained immediately causes division. Not just between the two created beings, but between the created beings and their creator. The most intimate relationship. The one sealed by God's breath. The breath of life. The division just continues from there. We don't hear this part of the story today, but we know what comes next. God asks if they ate from the tree and the first thing they do is blame one another. This knowledge they've gained, it puts barriers between themselves and even more importantly, between themselves and God. And now they're using it to judge one another, to blame someone else for their demise. Now, before we go any further, I want to be clear. This is a story. It's an allegory. It is not meant to be a historical accounting of how the world was created. But that does not mean it's not true, that it's not God inspired. God is speaking to us through this story. We started our worship today with a confession. We confess the sins of Adam and Eve. Now, maybe that seemed weird. I mean, we aren't the ones who took the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And yet, whether you believe in that term, original sin or not, somehow that sin of disobedience of self-elevation, of using our knowledge to beat someone else down, that is a sin in which we all partake. The truth of this story shows up in our lives today in many different ways. For example, in the same way we confess the sin of Adam and Eve, we must also confess the sin of slavery. Now, I've never owned slaves. I'm betting none of you have either. And yet in the same way that we as descendants of Adam and Eve continue to abuse the earth, causing wildfires so we may enjoy the earth's comforts, we as descendants of a slave owning society continue to reap the benefits of oppression. It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be an ash filled world. For even though this is not what God created us to be, God has not given up on us. 
Jesus knew all of this about us and he came anyway. He came to love us, forgive us, and teach us a new way. We are created to be in relationship and we can love one another. We can care for one another and for the world. We can turn things around. For that is what God calls us to do. That is the definition of repentance. We can recognize the relationship into which we have been created and honor it. To fight for the people who have been pushed down, to listen to the people who do not feel heard and not just the people, but the earth, the animals and all of creation. And so we come here today, every Sunday, and hopefully more than just Sundays, and we find ways to recognize our need for Jesus. And we confess. And then we roll up our sleeves and follow Jesus, acting as the body of Christ in this world. For that's who we are. Today's scripture reminds us that our very flesh binds us to one another and to this earth. And our very breath binds us to God. It's time to fight for a world in which we can look out our windows and not be worried. We're gonna have to hold our breath when we go out there. For breathing deeply is beautiful. Breathing brings life. Breathing is God's spirit working within us. So now as we are about to sing the hymn of the day, I challenge you to consider how can you and how can we, as the body of Christ, how can we be co-creators with God? Let us sing. Drawing together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, 
and all those in need. Faithful God, you welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a community of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. God of creation, the heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation, where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, especially in all the wildfires. We look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of wisdom, make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our national, state, and local leaders with patience and wisdom, especially in Washington, D.C., Olympia, Snohomish County, King County, Seattle, and Kenmore. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Righteous judge, bring healing and justice wherever harm is done, is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed, especially people of color. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor of all kinds. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of redemption, teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this body of two congregations a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For what else do we pray? Please type in your your requests in the chat or unmute yourself. From Al Boyette, we have a prayer for the family of Marilyn Daniels in their time of loss. Marilyn, his cousin, passed this last week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also have coming from Facebook from uh, Beverly Peterson, prayers for Marge the sister of a friend whose house burned in Oregon. Lord, um, have mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. We have a prayer request from someone who is going to be opening their home to uh, people who might be fleeing wildfires. We pray for those who are able to offer that hospitality and for those who are suddenly finding themselves without a home to go to. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We have a prayer from Jennifer that her sister's family finds their um, four-legged family member who escaped on Thursday night. Mm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We have a prayer on YouTube for rain um, to help our earth and... Uh, and the beings on it, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. I offer a prayer for safety and relaxation for Pastor Anya and her husband and their daughter as they head out on vacation this week. Keep them safe and in good health and help them to be renewed by this time away. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Cindy prays for her friend Tara, whose mother was recently diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer and yeah. for her mother. For all those who are facing frightening diseases and uncertain outcomes, we pray for your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. And for the Schold family, grieving the death of their youngest daughter, Karen Ball, on September 3rd. Lord, Lord have mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Praiseworthy God, whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you, and the tongues that taught us to praise you, especially John Chrysostom, Bishop of Constantinople, whom we commemorate today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We've now reached a time to share your good news. And I invite you, if you have some good news to share with us, to type that in the chat or to unmute yourself and tell us if you're on the Zoom call. But first, we're going to hear a little bit of good news from uh, a member of Prince of Peace. My name is Stanley Machokoto. I'm a member of Prince of Peace. I've been a member for approximately 16 years now. Uh, uh, and I'm also a housing outreach specialist. I work for North King County housing, the population were unhoused and they are usually passed by Prince of Peace and collect the quills, which Cindy uh, creates and give to those who are recently housed for a welcome gift. And how many people have you housed in 2020, Stanley? So far in 2020, including the people I housed in the motels, I've housed approximately 124 people. 124. 124. And uh, I think the people I've given quilts is approximately 24 to 30 quilts, which I've received from one of our members uh, named Cindy to help people in, in their starting to enjoy their newly found homes. Thanks be to God. Thank you for that good news, Stanley, and for the wonderful work you do helping people to find housing. I invite you now to share your good news with us. Let's see. We have some good news shared on Facebook. Um, Heidi says, gratitude for Janet Lowen and Nancy Martin for helping the Robottoms move from their home of over 50 years. Um, yes, they have continued to show up and help, and we are very grateful. Molly writes, after two and a half years, my oncologist determined my bone tumor has vanished. Mm -hmm. Praise God and praise your doctors. Thanks be to God. Praise God indeed. Bev writes that her brother Mike is scheduled to go home from the hospital on Thursday. I know that it has been a very long time of him having to be away from his wife, so I am sure they are all praising God. Now I want to share with you the peace of the Lord and to say that at this time uh, you would please have your bread and wine ready for um, Holy Communion and consider your offering to the work of our ministries. You may want to submit an offering in the traditional way by sending a check through the mail or by electronically giving to one of your churches. There's a, a connection on Facebook Live where you can also offer an offering just at this very moment. You might want to give an offering of your time 
And I'm eager to tell you that as we move forward to have a North King County enhanced shelter in the city of Shoreline, you are invited to come and help by volunteering. We have to clean out that former nursing home. We have to figure out what furniture can stay, what furniture can go, and we have to paint all those rooms and this by about the middle of December. So I don't have the avenue for signing up to volunteer just yet, but I'm sure it will be very soon. And if you want to let um, the office know at North Lake or let me or Londa know at Prince of Peace that you would like to be involved in volunteering, we'll most certainly get you involved. So with that, uh, the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. And let's see a peace video from some of our members. Okay. I'm Dorothy. Oh, yes. the, peace. the peace of peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Hi, North Lake and Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Good morning. I'm Tom Jakes. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Luna, peace of the Lord be with you too. High five. High five. High five. High five. <laughs> oh, well. Janet, we're with you now. Jesus is not bound to a specific place, a specific table and definitely not specific people. We believe Christ is present with us by the Holy Spirit whenever and wherever we, the church, gather. So the table you are using right now is no longer your table alone. It is part of Christ's table, and you are part of Christ's church. It is in that spirit, with the Holy Spirit, the one sent to light a flame within us, that I say, God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and love, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of God, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. It is remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord and unite the wills of those who share in this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. 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 We pray in the words our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
thy will be done, be done on earth as, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of thy trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to take the bread that you have with you or the cracker and hold it to the screen. This is the body of Christ given for the you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Gary. Body of Christ given for you, Pam. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for me. The blood of Christ shed for you, Gary. The blood of Christ shed for you, Pam. Amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We'll sing our communion hymn. We are all one in Christ. We are all one in Christ. We are one body. All one people out of many. We are all one in Christ. We are one body. All one people. one Lord. There is one faith, one holy love. There is one baptism, there is one spirit. Who is God the comforter? We are all one in Christ. We are one body. All one people out of many. We are all one in Christ. We are one body. All one people one Lord. There is one faith, one holy love. There is one baptism, there is one spirit. Who is God the comforter? We are all one in Christ. We are one body, all one people out of many. We are all one in Christ. We are one body, all one people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy, and the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. We'll have a few announcements now. I want to start off by saying that the Church Council of Prince of Peace meets Monday night at seven o'clock using our usual Zoom number. And after worship today, we have coffee hour for both our churches for North Lake or anyone who wants to stay with North Lake, you can stay on the coffee hour uh, until Pastor Anya leaves to go and watch the Seahawks. <laughs> yeah, actually, they can stay beyond the time that I leave to go watch the Seahawks because I will be cheering our Seahawks on. So, um, I will be in coffee hour briefly, and then I will leave the group to, uh, to continue talking at that time. I did want to mention um, the racism, the anti-racism team that's working together on our statement and other ways that we might be able to proclaim ourselves publicly as actively working against racism and commit to certain actions. Um, we are meeting. If you're interested in joining us, it is not too late. Please let us know. We would love to have um, a couple of more voices join us for that. 
And I would like to say again, please do consider whether this fall is a time when you can dig in and help to clean out that nursing home on Highway 99 in Shoreline. It's about 167th and, and uh, 99, so should be accessible to everybody. Um, need to clean it out, organize things. Oh my goodness, if you are an organizer, we need you. And if you love to paint, or even if you mildly like to paint, there will be time to volunteer. Please let us know that you would like to be on the, we can take a North Lake team or a Prince of Peace team or both get to know when I, we're paint. I know a couple of North Lake folks who are pretty good at organizing. So maybe um, maybe we can recruit a few folks and I'd be happy to help with that as well, Pastor Pam. Thank you. That sounds wonderful. Janet, will you dismiss us? I will. Let's see, get the right page here. Go in peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Go Hawks! 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 Go